June 1st is the traditional start uh, of the hurricane season. I've heard some people say they maybe they should move it up a little bit. Uh, but uh, what is the expectation for the this coming season? All of the major forecast groups are calling for another active season, which would be our seventh in a row. That would be an all-time record. The previous record was four above average seasons in a row. And the reason that we're expecting another active year is because we've got warmer than average ocean temperatures across much of the Atlantic. And we've got a La Nina event occurring in the Eastern Pacific. And when that occurs, you tend to be seeing favorable upper level winds for Atlantic storms. And this was the case last year and the previous year, both were La Nina years. And we had 30 named storms in 2020, uh, 21 named storms last year. And NOAA in their prediction in May came up with uh, up to 21 storms this year as well. So it uh, wouldn't be a surprise to see another bumper crop of hurricanes in the Atlantic. Okay, so um, uh, tornadoes really hard to relate to climate change. What can we relate uh, in so far as hurricanes and climate change? Hurricanes and climate change you expect to see more intense hurricanes. The proportion of storms getting strong is going to increase. And that is something we've observed. The intensification rate also will increase. We've seen a lot of rapid intensifiers in recent years. And the amount of rainfall that these storms dump is going to increase. And we have seen a number of very rainy hurricanes in recent years. In addition, with sea level rise, the storm surge that these hurricanes generate when they come inland is going to increase because now you're able to push your storm surge farther inland. So those are the main impacts we're, we're expecting to see from climate change and hurricanes. We've had uh, several strong storms that have exhibited this kind of stalling behavior. Uh, Dorian, uh, Harvey, and Florence in particular yeah. come to mind, which made their local impacts really quite spectacular. Do uh, you have anything to say about that? We've observed a slowdown in hurricane motion when they come inland, and it's not really known what's causing that, but there are good reasons to suspect it might be tied to climate change, human-caused climate change, leading to a reduction in the upper-level winds steering these hurricanes. But we haven't seen enough data yet to know for sure what could be causing this. Uh, last year, we had Hurricane Ida, which was uh, very strong hitting in the Gulf, but then I think surprised people by maintaining enough strength uh, over land as it made its way up to, uh, the, to New York area and really clobbered. Uh, New York and New Jersey with a lot of rain and killed a, a number of people. Uh, what can we say about that? One of the things that has been published in recent years is that hurricanes are maintaining their strength farther inland, and that has been tied to warmer ocean temperatures. So it's not a surprise that we're going to be seeing more storms like Ida spreading damage farther inland because of this more moisture available to them from the warmer oceans. Ida was the fifth most expensive weather disaster in world history, uh, over $70 billion in damage. So uh, that's of great concern that we might be seeing more such cases like this. It's also interesting with Ida because it, uh, it like, a lot of hurricanes, but Ida in particular had a huge impact on uh, oil and gas infrastructure in the mm -hmm. Gulf, uh, both uh, uh, drilling and, and refining, enough so that it actually it put a dent in uh, U.S. Uh, oil production for a while there. And it, it is a kind of a poster child for the increasing impacts of climate events on critical infrastructure. Can we say anything about that? My biggest concern when Ida was hitting was the impact it would have on trade going up the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River exports about 60% of all of our grain to the rest of the world. And 
the hurricane hit the port of South Louisiana, which is the US's largest port, and grain exports were virtually halted for weeks because of that. Now, it's fortunate this occurred early in the hurricane season, because if it had occurred in October when the harvest is in and people are expecting to get shipments of grain, it would have had a substantial impact on global food prices. So we have to be cognizant of the, the mess we're in right now with global food supplies, thanks to the war in the Ukraine and climate change as well, causing increased disasters, that if we get another storm like Ida hitting in October, say, uh, messing up the ports along the Mississippi River, it could be a really serious concern.